What's up guys, welcome back to Investing PH. So 2023 comes to an end and oh my what a challenging year it was for us investors. The PSCI during the year was going down consistently month after month, even going down below the 6000 range, which was the second lowest point of the PSCI for the past 3 years. The market really tested our discipline and patience, but again for me as a dividend value investor, my mindset is fixed to hold for the long run. I see last year as a year of stock sale, companies were in a big discount and I kept on buying and buying the companies I know are strong and can continue to grow in the years to come. Now if you notice, I upgraded my portfolio tracker. I made a portfolio dashboard so my presentation for you guys would be better and clearer. To start things off, the market had quite a good run in the first weeks of the year which helped my portfolio recover. My returns are now 11.52% or 253,548 from my total invested money of 2,201,750 pesos. This is with the PSCI at negative 19% and FMETF at 13.21% from the day I started investing which was in July 2019. Though my portfolio's return went up from the market recovery, most of my stocks are still in the red, especially my real estate stocks which since the pandemic haven't yet recovered. Most of my gains are thanks to my dividends which for 2023 have reached record levels. I got a total of 122,968 worth of dividends. This puts my average monthly dividend income to 10,247. This is outstanding. I've explained in my last portfolio update that this was my goal before I reached 30 years old, to get at least 10k a month of dividends, and I achieved it last year, which was 2 years earlier than my estimation. Before I started investing, I had an estimated time frame for when I would reach this certain amount of passive income. When I computed it back then, based on the amount I was investing and the dividends I was getting, I'd reach 10k at more or less 30 years old, but I never expected that I'd reach it earlier. Well, this is thanks to the market trading sideways for more than 3 years now, and in 2022 and last year, the market went down again and again. This allowed me to buy companies at a huge discount. Companies you won't even consider a high dividend paying company pre-pandemic, but with its price going down, the yield increase, because most of the companies I hold, even though their stock price was cut in half, didn't decrease their dividends. The amount of dividends the company is paying doesn't rely on its stock price, it relies on how much the company earned in the previous year. Most of the companies I hold had more than recovered their pre-pandemic earnings. If you're not aware, even though the market cap of the PSCI has been going down for the past 5 years, the total earnings and revenue of the companies in it are going up and have reached record levels. We are no longer in the recovery stage, we have already surpassed it. That's why I'm so happy I get to buy these companies at a bargain. I don't get it why investors pre-pandemic are willing to pay such high prices. Meanwhile right now, those companies they are buying are producing higher profits and are trading at a better deal. They are afraid to go in. That's why you can understand it, why the stock market is the weirdest market you will ever see. When prices are high, people go in and buy everything they can, but when prices are low, they are so afraid to buy the same product, they are willing to buy at a higher price. It's even an understatement to say they are the same product, because most of the companies have now produced higher profits compared pre-pandemic. So for me as a value investor, this is a haven, it's so easy to find great companies at a bargain which gives me a good dividend yield and this is the reason why I've reached my dividend goals early because I didn't expect back then that I'd get such a huge discount from these companies. How could I let this opportunity go to waste? That's why after the pandemic, I was investing more money than before and it paid off. My passive income from my portfolio can be compared to renting a small condo unit and the best thing about it, the money I get is so easy to reinvest. I don't need to save up another 2M just to buy a condo I can easily reinvest it and it will already work for me. In stocks, it's so easy to tap into the power of compounding interest, but of course, you have to know where you will put it. Anyway, our market right now is sitting at a price to earnings ratio of 12.1, which means the market is still trading below its 5 year average P ratio of 18 and below its 10 year average P of 18.8. We are still far from reaching the pre pandemic level, but again, the earnings of the PSCI have already reached record levels. Going back to my dividends, the total dividends I've received so far over 4 years is 256,188.88 and the companies that gave me dividends last month were FGen which gave me 1,305 pesos, AUB 1,336, LTG 6,588, 
This is by far the largest contributor to my dividends this year, gave me 25,000 in total. All Homes 1,985.94, Emory 2,501.82, and lastly Globe 3,375 pesos. Now there was also a recent stock split that happened which was AUB. Though this does not affect the company's financials, companies sometimes do this to make the stock more attractive. By increasing the shares outstanding, lowers the stock price of the company, which for some investors, a lower stock price sometimes for them is more attractive. This is the biggest misconception of new investors. They think, oh, this company's stock price is 1 peso, compared to, for example, Globe, which has a stock price of 1,700 plus. Though this is the case, it does not mean the company that has a 1 peso price is cheaper than the other. It may be the other way around. That's why the price itself does not mean anything. You have to relate the price to its earnings, equity, etc. Although there is a benefit to it, because in our market, we have a minimum lot size. So a lower stock price sometimes helps small investors buy a minimum lot size of that company. Like for example, if you buy DNL, the minimum lot size is 100. So you can buy it for less than 700 pesos per lot size because DNL's stock price is only 6.55. But if you compare it to Globe, the minimum lot size is 5, which means you need 8,585.25 to buy it because its stock price is more than 1,700 per share. Though you can go for the odd lot, but sometimes it's more expensive and takes a while for your order to get in. This is one of the advantages of a stock split. It seemingly makes a stock more attractive. So this is what happened to AUB. It had a 1.5 is to 1 stock split ratio. Now before we move on, if you're new to investing and have no clue at all where to start and how to analyze companies, then there is a simple solution to that which is simply Wall Street. They have tons of data available for you. They give you graphs, comparisons, and explanations wherein a beginner investor could understand. So no need to jump from website to website to get all the data needed. They have it all for you here. They also provide you with updates whenever the company releases its earnings, when insiders are buying or selling, dividend announcements, and when the stock price falls below its intrinsic value. And speaking of that, they also compute that as well for you which is really helpful, especially if you're new to investing. And there's more, they also have a portfolio tracker that helps you assess the health of your portfolio, detailed returns, and a lot more. So if you want to try it out, they offer their basic plan forever free. And if you want to avail their paid plan, then by using my link, you can get up to 40% discount. So what are you waiting for? Try out Simply Wall Street. Now back to the video. The stocks I bought last December are MBT, FGen, Security Bank, Costco, LTG, and DDMPR. With that, these are all the stocks I own. In total, I have 19 stocks in my portfolio. Globe is still the largest, taking up 11.4%, followed by LTG 9.5%, DNL 8.2%, Megaworld 7.5%, DDMPR 6.6%, Emory 6.1%, and Metro Bank 5.6%. And if you group my stocks by sector, holding companies 9.4%, Bank 16.8%, Real Estate 14.2%, REITs 12.8%, Services which is solely Globe 11.4%, Industrial 8.2%, Retail 7%, Energy 6.8%, and my Index Fund 3.4%. With that, this is it for my monthly update. So what are my plans in 2024? Well, I just continue what I do. Invest regularly, buy the companies that are still trading below my computed intrinsic value, and reinvest all dividends received. That's it. I don't plan to withdraw any money from my portfolio for a long time. I want to fully take advantage of compounding interest to grow my passive income so that one day I'd be able to retire off of my dividends. Now speaking of that, if you haven't yet watched my last video about how much you need to live off dividends, then better watch it. So for the start of the year, I'd leave you all with one of my favorite quotes from Warren Buffett. And I know I've shared this quote before, but if you haven't yet started this, then 2024 is the year to start. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. There is no better time to start than now, because the earlier you use compounding interest, the faster it is you would be able to retire in the future. Investing in stocks is one of the easiest ways to tap into this power. This is your money working for you 24-7. But of course, you have to study it first, learn the basics first before you start, and my YouTube channel can help you with that, so do watch my other videos as well. With that said, I hope you've learned something from this video and if it did and still haven't clicked the like button, then be sure to do so before leaving. Thank you and see you in the next video.